whack the eco application and the vulnerability is that people have found. So how do I do this? So you do apostrophe, a space or, space one equals one, and sign colon, followed by a pound sign. And or then put the password. Anything, anything. You can do the blank and leave. So what am I expecting? What should it do? Uh, Just uh, log you in. So what should it do? Not log you in. Yeah. <laughs> Not log you in. <laughs> what does it do? Yeah, it's the first user in the database that logs in. Alright, so then how do I get it to log me in as a specific user? You put in, um, instead of, um, like, or when use one, I think you put in, like, ID, and ID equals, uh, whatever ID is in the database, like, ID equals one. Or well, you probably did one, so let's do, like, two. two yeah, then, uh, send a colon in. Uh, yeah. Wait, did that not work? That should work. No, the other one. Oh, the other one. It did. But oh, okay. That just log this in as the first user. What if that's not the user? It would oh, target a specific got it. user ID. Got it. Or when he was one and ID equals. So, what about this is redundant? Scripting vulnerability in either the search bar or the guest book. Cool. So how do I prove that it's process scripting vulnerability? So you type in the script. So it's a uh, carrot script or it's yeah, script. Um, the other okay. type in alert and parentheses put in the string high. Then put ending parentheses semicolon then ending script tag. Search it should pop up something. Is there an error? It's not working. Hmm. It worked on mine. Is there a Yeah, the browser. Oh, okay. The browser's like. too smart for you. <laughs> yeah, I need to add those headers. I created those before the headers existed. There's a uh, HTTP post. Um, Wait just a second. Just a second. So the trick is always to look at where the script is, right? So you can see that pick. So the way you want to check for this, right, is to put something like foo bar in here for search. View page source. Look for foo bar. And you can see it's in two places. It's in here, the input field, and it's also used here as part of this. So then we just saw if we put in our script tags, we can actually see here in this value, it looks like it's actually being quoted correctly. But this one here is not escaped, and so we have a process scripting vulnerability here. Cool. There is, there is a uh, remote OS command injection on uh, 
slash pass check dot php. Use that proxy, and that uh, found that. You should be using tools. You should be doing it. Really? Yes. I know the tools can find them, uh -huh. some of them, but you need to be able to know how to search for those. So figure out how to find that out. What else? So it's one cross site scripting, one C, one section. There was another. Did you find another cross site scripting? This is another one. On the guest book? So in the comment field, you can put your name, but in the comment field, you can put any script tag you want, any kind of JavaScript. I in did a while loop. Tag? In the comment tag? Yeah. The script there. So I did a while loop, and it was able to like, do a bunch of alerts. You can do anything you want. As long as it has a name, you put submit, it will get it from the database. So what's the key difference between these two vulnerabilities? Anyone who Which loads one? the comment page is going to see the alert because it's in the page. It's so static. It needs to be right. uh, it's more of a vector. The post is more of a vector. Uh, so yeah, let's look at this page, right? So how do I actually have to how do I have to execute this cross site scripting? You have to type it into the search bar. Type it in the search bar and then what's gonna happen? Displays back to you what you typed in doing the. How, how does it get there? It's a post. Is it? Is it a post or a yeah, It's a request on the page. Right? Tell me, what does the form say? What type of request is it? Get. So I mean, when I click the button, what's going to happen? Click the button and it calls a git on that field. Then I don't. How am I able to get into the application? Hint: It's on his. It's on his screen. Well, in the search bar. Oh, yeah. You enter a search bar. No, no. Once you hit Keep search. Looking. Yeah. Then what's going to happen? How does it get to that page? It's going to put whatever you searched into, um, it's going to execute something. <laughs> it's going to execute something? I'd agree, that's correct. It, it gets put into pictures that are tagged as blank, but it has the script there and interprets it as a script that yeah, just how runs. how does it get there? Because the code does it. Where does it read it from? What? Well, when I click this button, what exactly happens? An HTTP is sent from us to that. Yes, for what? The get. No, the well, get. Get is a type of HTTP yeah. request. What am I getting? A result based on those, based on the what you entered in the search. Yes, but how does it know that? Parses it. Parses what? What you entered. Where does it get it from? <laughs> the answer it wants on that screen. It's right in front of it. The full ball. Where do you see foobar? What do you mean? That was a previous. Wait, that's, so a, that's a heading, right? That yeah, was obviously that was the right there. Where else is entry. foobar? Look at the screen. It's not. Oh, there's the screen, but where's in the query? Where is that going to be in the HTTP request? Inside the URL. Yes. So yes. that means that every time you display this, it'll be in the URL. Oh, whatever you answer that. Yes. So when I click this, exactly what happens? Is and we can see this in part. Right? I am making this is the raw HTTP request, right? There's the get method. This is why we looked at exactly what the protocol says and does and look like. We're sending a get request to slash pictures slash search dot php, and 
and then a question mark for the URL parameters, then query equals the thing that we put in, and x equals 27 and y equals Cancel the screen back there. So now, what is the code doing when it generates this HTML response? Response. So here's the response, here's the HTML response, so here's the raw response, the whole HTTP response. But the content type of what it returns is text HTML. So here's the HTML that it returns. So what did it do with our input? Uh, It thinks sure. it's at the code, or part of the the website. It, it's in the values. Yeah. For for query. So it's going to be here. So what does the code look like on the server side to do this? What do you mean the code? The PHP code that's executing. Right? Something executes. It's PHP code. Yeah. yeah. What does it look like? Okay, we don't know. Maybe back. I know, but you can see the output. So what? How does it have to be written based on what you just? Oh, it has to be decoded. Close. Encoded, right? It's calling HTML entities. It's outputting the HTML entities of our input, right? And so then. server-side code? From the, our query. Yes, from the URL, from the parameter that is sent in this URL. Right? Remember, there's nothing to do with forms or anything at this point. It's just reading from everything, this HTTP request that we sent, which is this query parameter. So taking that, it's building up this page. Everything else seems like it's constant except for this. So this is changing, and then where else is it being? H2 uh, header. That our tag yeah. right there. Fair so how's it display it? But at that point, it's displaying a script. Well, here it's just, well, this is the way you got to, you got to separate out what the, what they return, what is the web application returning to us versus how does our browser interpret it, mm -hmm. right? The important thing is that we are just getting back a bunch of bytes, right? This is the raw bytes, and it's a little bit muddled, right? Because Burp is parsing this as HTML, so it's color encoding it. But really, all our browser sees is all these bytes, and then it parses it. And when it's parsing this H2 element, it says, oh, there's an H2 tag, and oh, inside here there's a script tag. And so that's why our script executes, and we see this alert box with XSS <coughs> here. So fundamentally, where does this input this so cross-site scripting, remember the name comes from JavaScript that was not intended by the developer executes on this page, right? I don't think there's any, yeah, there's no other JavaScript on this page. So the developers of this web application do not want any JavaScript code to be executed on this page, but because they are outputting this user input completely unsanitized, we can execute any kind of JavaScript we want. So now if I wanted to make, but doing it to myself doesn't really do anything, right? Because I'm just making a pop-up screen appear on my browser window. He sent a link to someone else, right? Yes, so what do I have to send them? Well, what you entered. It'll ought to already be filled out. This, I have to send them this link. Yeah. I have to trick you to click on it, and then the JavaScript that's inside this query parameter will be executed inside your browser context. Cool. So if they were, if, if they never output it, um, like in there as tagged as whatever, right? Then this wouldn't be a vulnerability. Correct. Because it would only be, well, because mm -hmm. we can actually see just a second. So, so we have this value here, right? 
So we can see that it's escaping less than symbols, greater than symbols. It's not escaping single quote. And what do we need to break out of this parameter, of this attribute of this HTML tag? What's the character that's enclosing us in right now? Double quote. Mm -hmm. Yeah, double, double quote. Let's see what it does here. So we can see that, okay, we can say, now conclude it is most likely um, safe from SQL injection or cross site scripting vulnerabilities. Because there's no way, if we cannot include a double quote character here, there's no way we can break out of these value double quote and start executing something else. Wait, but why would you need to do that if it's just uh, cross site scripting? We need to start, we need to get to executing JavaScript. Yeah, but why do you need to break out though? Because we saw that if they're outputting it back to yeah, us. If, if it was not in here. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, if it's not present here, and we only had this one place to try to, to uh, inject, this is the first step we try to do is use double quotes. But, um, so where does that one page, uh, where is that one spot visible, like on the page? Oh, in, in there. Yeah. Okay, so this is how this fills in the default value. Uh, put that in. That's what that value, the value attribute of the input okay. tag. So that wasn't sanitized, so that also would have been process well. Yes. And much more subtle one because we don't need <coughs> bracket characters, but we'll look at those kind of later. So okay. what we're trying to do is find a way to confuse the browser between what is data and what is script. We're trying to make it execute our code, right? And we know that anything in the URL string comes from the attacker, therefore this script JavaScript code is from the attacker. So then now let's look at the guest book. Right? So what did I do? So now if we refresh the guest book, we'll see this cross-site script thing. And then if we go look at where it is in the guest book. You make this bigger. Not that I don't want to, I just don't know how. There's an accessibility thing um, in the uh, app settings. Where? It's uh, in, under accessibility, there's like a way to turn on the zoom, but there's a, uh, it's usually a, a shortcut that you have to enable. Oh, you mean under the Mac? Yeah, under the, yeah, sorry. Go to preferences. Oh. I'm not from this guy. It's, uh, that's something else. From like system preferences. No. Yeah. Oh, how did you get the website? Shut up. This is from Docker. Uh, yeah, I have Docker. Oh, cool. Do I have to download anything? Huh? Do I have to download anything? No, I don't have to download anything. Just do Docker, run. That's all I'm going to say. Okay. Sorry, it's a little weird. I think it's only zooming on your end. Oh, you guys can see that? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're not directly plugged in, you're using the wireless uh, thing? Yeah, the mic's sure directly plugged in. Maybe there's a good try. Oh. Uh, okay, so when we look at the guest book, right, let's look at the same thing. So what was the request that we sent to the guest book? Uh, yeah, Kelly. It's, uh, okay. Uh, so then you have to follow. No, no, what is this request? I just, I just made a request. Get post. I'm getting post. This is a post request? To get a question. 
Which, wait. And I made it just now. Hit refresh. Oh, when you hit refresh, I thought you meant the submit button. We're making a get request to slash guestbook.php. We send our cookie, but that's about it. That's pretty much the only information that we send. But what do we get back? We get back. The comment by foo, which has the text script alert one. So where did this come from? Did it come from my request? No. I was loaded on the page. What do you mean it's loaded in the page? Has comment? Yes. Where did it come from? Someone else server. entered it or you entered it? Yes. So this actually, so we can't go back to the post where I made this. We can see that I made a post request to the guest book. And I passed in name yeah, equals right. foo right. and comment equals the script tag. Yeah. Right. So then, what do I need to do to get this JavaScript code to execute in your browser? Just give them this uh, URL, and then anytime they come to this page, it's automatically loaded. Yes. So this is the key difference between cross-site scripting vulnerabilities. So this is we have two different ways of categorizing them. One is reflected like this, which essentially means it's using input from the user's browser directly in the page. The key thing here is I need to get you to click on this exact link. If I can't trick you to click on this link, I cannot get that JavaScript code to execute in your browsers and violate the same working policy. Here, this is a stored cross-site scripting. So here, I can do the injection once, and it stays in here forever, presumably because it's part of the database, right? So we think about how is this likely written. Well, there's probably a comments table somewhere, which is storing all the comments of all the users over time. And then when I reflect, uh, refresh this page, it's grabbing all the usernames and the comments and building up this table by looping through all of them. So this is much more dangerous, right? Because now any JavaScript, anybody who visits this page whether I send you the link or not is going to be executing this JavaScript code. So is there any other vulnerability? Yes. Um, the SQL one. Where? So if you tried to log in. We did that one. Oh, uh, never mind. <laughs> Sorry. What else? So password checker. Whenever I would put in a semicolon, it would just break the server entirely. I wasn't ever able to make it like execute the command on the command line, but yeah, that's it's still it's a vulnerability. Cool. Hold that fun. Wow. Yeah. Not very cool. Yeah, Take virus. down the whole server? <laughs> I don't know. That's pretty cool. <laughs> Are we allowed to use spiders? I would say yes. Okay, yes. So you can use a spider to spider the site, but I'm not using any automated tools at this point in your career because you want to know exactly how to test for all these things. So and if, that's if you use spiders, then you could go to slash uh, pictures, and then you could uh, Ooh, wow, those slash pictures or, or slash CSS as well. And then here you can see that there I see. So what does this tell you though? Uh, what files are there? Convince me that it's vulnerable. Uh, can you go up there? Okay. Um, well, you can see PHP code, right? Click on one of those. Does it open? Uh, could download it. So how do I find out what happened when I clicked on these links? First, because it's keeping track of everything that I'm doing. So let's see. We went to slash picture slash conflict. So the response was what? Redirecting us, where is it redirecting us to? Uh, location. Yes. The 
location slash header, users. the all important location header. So it's re re lo uh, redirecting us to slash users slash login. So what does this likely mean? And did this send us any HTTP code in its response? Uh, sorry, PHP code in its response. Send back text Dr. HTML. Well, it sent back a header of that, yeah, but you can see the content hurt. length is zero. So nothing. Nothing. It sends us back nothing. No body. Should have it. But can you regulate and maybe try to see the actual code? Yeah, it's actually I tried downloading. I just downloaded the HTML. Yeah, so you can get some code. Let me try to download it. Yeah, you can just, it's the same thing as doing page source. That's so. great. doing when I'm trying to access this what is it doing what is that why is it redirecting me well because you haven't logged in for all this now. exactly it's access control right it's checking and saying hey you haven't logged in yet so go to the login page so if you log in as a correct oh. user uh -oh, it won't redirect you well let's see and one thing to do would be checking all of them right I mean we can you know, maybe so like here's the circ the search page actually redirected me to error.php, which is interesting. There's a recent, recent, I can go to the recent.php, but it didn't let me download the PHP source. is 404 not found. So there's nothing there? Nothing there. No content. Zero. How about a uh, conflict view? I was going to say upload. Purchase. Pictures. Upload. Upload? Okay. Here it takes me somewhere. Yeah, so why not? But where does it take me to? Oh, oh, sorry. It takes you. It's not. It's not a. We're not getting the code, but there is an exploit on this page. Well, besides the point. So we're talking about this. We're wanting to get the server side code right now. Is that the goal? No, we're exploring that. Ah. Can you FTP? I don't know. So what is this? What is this doing? This is what it needs to use to load pages, this directory. What do you mean? Well, that's what they've stored, right? These are 
stored there. But why do we see this? So because we navigated to a directory and not an actual file. Exactly. And it's horrible default behavior of Apache. Yep. <laughs> so for Apache to be useful, I can't remember what it's called, but it's usually enabled by default. Loud directory all, browsing. Was it? Loud directory browsing or something? Yeah, something like that. But it's usually enabled on all Apache default installs and let you disable it. So if you go to a directory that does not have an index.html, an index.php, or another index page, it displays this, which shows you the files. But then, when Apache, when I click on one of these, so now I'm trying to access a PHP file, it's doing what? Is it showing me the PHP file? No. Wait, right. No. What is it doing? What is Apache doing? What was that? Kind of. That's the output that we get, but how do we get that? Executing the PHP. It executes the PHP code and outputs whatever it outputs as HTML. Exactly. <laughs> so this is exactly what's happening here. We're making a request to Apache. Here, Apache's saying, oh, there exists in the web root, I think it's like var www.html, uh, there does exist a pictures directory, and I have this stupid option available, so here's everything in this directory. But PHP, uh, Apache has an option that says, hey, anything that ends in .php, execute it as if it's a PHP script. And so it executes us and shows us the output. Now, one thing that could be really interesting about this is if there's any hidden files, so anything that starts with a dot, or there's anything that does not end with .php, that could be something we could look at, or if there's any temporary files in here. So Vim, is it Vim that does the tilde at the end, or is that Emacs by default? One of them uses like temporary files with the tilde. That's Vim. Emacs is the pound so Yeah, something like yeah. that. So yeah, there's different editor temporary files. So you can sometimes find temporary files on here. Um, but fundamentally, this doesn't. This gives us some information, but not really the information that we're looking for. We can't just download these files because Apache always will execute anything that ends in .php. The check pass page. Where's there's that? there's something. Well, <laughs> I don't want to hear something. I want to hear the vulnerability. So the there's like multiple of the same vulnerability, but on different pages. Okay. Um, uh, did you already try the one on guestbook? Yep. What what about guestbook search login. What about upload? Upload. Yeah. What's on upload? What's on upload? So what do I do? You could copy that alert code and well make this. I don't know which field it's in. <laughs> so just spam because I've seen the source code. Well, what about the search bar though? I mean, I've seen the HTML source. Okay, so let's think about this. So, what's going to happen when I click this search button? To where? Uh, probably another page. Probably? Yeah. How can you find out where? Uh, purposely. Uh, we can view the source. We can see the form is going to go to slash pictures slash search.php and get parameter with the name of query. So the same vulnerability as the last one. Exactly. So, that's, so even though the search bar appears on multiple pages, it all makes the exact same HTTP request. So this I wouldn't say that this page, the, the vulnerability doesn't exist on the form, it exists on the code behind the form. Oh, yeah. Well, what about any of those fields? Sure. Is there, uh, you tell me. You guys uh, spent all last week looking at it, so tell me which, one, which one's vulnerable. We spent some time going through the slides. <laughs>
Okay. So. No, there's no, there's no. The, uh, the title's vulnerable on that one to a cross site scripting. Uh, can't remember what the stored kind is called. But yeah, so you can put script. To be stored. Is it just stored? Uh, it's a very fancy name. Why would title be and not the other fields? Because oh, title is getting, if that. you look at the HTML in a minute, when it when the view page gets called, it's you'll uploading it to the other. And then well, so the way this works is you pick your picture, and then when you hit upload, it's going to submit, and it's going to save it in the database, but then it's going to pull up the view page, and the view page has a vulnerability uh, in it okay, where it's okay. displaying that field. And then it'll display the title. And in the title, it'll display it. Food guys. Pizza <laughs> guy's late. I know. Oh, even but we are thankful to him. Right? Ow. <laughs> oh, it. Darn it. Hey, darn it. You're the one who did this. <laughs> you told me it was vulnerable. So. It looked like it was. It I, like I didn't get that far. Verified. So, I do know we can put any file and we'll just upload it. So, if we got the other. Uh, the password check thing, we got that to execute arbitrary code, couldn't we execute any program we put up through this? Uh, once you can execute any program on the server, you can download whatever code you want yeah. from wherever and execute it. So yeah, that could help. But yeah. if maybe if they restricted outgoing access, that would be a way to do that. You write your own PHP program and upload it. The same, the same stored one is if you make a comment to a photo. Are you sure? I just did it. Eric said he did it too. Yeah, but so he did high. I didn't. But it doesn't just take it to create. I need to reload the page, which is just does. There we go. So this is. Uh, SSS or for the, uh, it's SSS, but it's stored. Yeah. Because when you upload the file, it'll store it somewhere in the database. Mm -hmm. And when you go to the explore, see the name it'll be loading this title field every time. Mm -hmm. Get some pizza, get some pizza. Did you uh, confirm the shelter data? Or no? Did you confirm? Oh, did you, like, does that work? Can you upload the shelter data? Oh, and it worked? Or? Yeah. Okay. So I was just a random file. Okay. Well, because I'm not actually trying to execute. I was gonna say try and execute uh, arbitrary PHP yeah. instead because that's what it's written in. Yeah. Yes. PHP. What do you mean? Just write PHP code. I, mean, I don't know how to write PHP code, but write PHP well, code. The internet. No, I don't. The internet knows. The how internet does know it. Do you think that it'll execute PHP if it, like, has an image? Sure. What's this? What's the extension of this? That PHP, right? No, 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 no. But, I mean, if you upload an image and then it has to load that image on a page, yes. would it execute the code as PHP? Because then it might not. It might not, but if you could go to the directory in which the file was actually stored, which you can, then you could potentially view that is PHP it's oh, or is the page can, itself. Can we have Apache execute our own PHP code? Oh, that's a good idea. Prove it. Could just come from the internet. What's the except World of Warcraft? Except my Eric, my man.
I don't know if that works. But well, just look at what it does first. Well, what should I? What kind of code should I get? Just look for Hello World PHP. Literally, I typed in my first PHP program, copy and paste. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, right there. Where? Go, go up to the top. That no, wasn't right. in here. That's that? Save that as a .ph. That's uh, too hard. I need to download the file easier. What? <laughs> I don't want to copy and paste it into the file. You killed me. Open image location. That doesn't work. No, I got it. It's broken. What, what in the world is end in? Uh, oh, I just go to a different file and save you the location. Duh. A. Mm. So yeah, got to do the PHP code. Really? Yeah. Sweet. Uh, I'm getting a couldn't move picture. There. I just you saved it as file name PHP. dot PHP and. Really? I was having that error last time. I don't know. That was an easier way to find it. How'd you find it? Um. So I went to a random photo, and I did copy image location, and I pasted it. And then I deleted the file name, and then I just kind of... Oh, you browsed to it. Yeah. yeah. That's a good way to do it. Yeah. And I also removed house, and I saw A. Is that now? No. Wait, wait, wait. What do you have? Hmm? Slash upload is where the uploads go. And it put, it put my upload in a folder called A. delete it? Delete it? You said you deleted stuff. In the URL. So I opened up a... Here, let me find it again. So like, I got this image here. Right? Mm -hmm. The house that I share. Yeah. If you right click and do copy image location, and then you paste it in. Oh, okay. okay. Then it brings you to here, and you so can you just... Then you go... Yeah, then you go backwards to find where it's stored, and it put it into A. Okay. I don't know why... I, oh, I know why I named it A, because I told it to be called A. <laughs> Duh. That's a good... That's yeah. a good... What is it actually sending back? Show me the burp response. Burp response? So here we do it. Did I find something new? I don't know how to get the upload word. So Login is a valid user. Maybe. Yeah, what's the response though? Just forward it. Wait, are you logged in? As a Go user? to the HTTP history. Yes. Okay. All the way to the bottom. Oh, yeah, it's not formed. Yeah. Um, it's calling good. Yeah, what's the response? No, no, no. But, uh, we want to actually uh, make an account. Go back up to the we'll do that account. I think. Just do like test, test, test. test. Has you won't remember how. Oh, uh, go back here and like control. Wait, you won't remember how many users are in there. Control R. Okay. You're intercepting it. Yeah. Turn that off? Okay. There we go. Did it execute your code? Yeah, Echo, hello. It didn't do that. No, it didn't. Can I try and upload? Oh, yeah, I just did the header. Adam, I couldn't figure out what the vulnerability was for the uh, calendar. Because it's, it's using like yeah, bin didn't slash date code, but oh, it didn't to no. get the date. Cause I didn't realize that. If you put in, I kind of uh, copy the file and it didn't really I think look it's at just it. like user slash but calendar it or whatever. HTML, if you put though. in the time, it takes in in the URL like the parameter in the milliseconds or whatever it is. Uh, yeah, like if you do uh, zero for the uh, time, then it gives you January first, nineteen seventy. Uh, but I assume that that's like some command injection error. I don't. Oh, I, d I got it, Adam. I got it. Your PHP code, Yeah. So here's here's the there's the PHP code. So show me. And then there's the output. But right uh, right click the use one. Yeah. 
you had to make the name of the of the of the file dot php file dot php so oh, bbb dot yeah. php yeah and then then yeah. it saves it using that name yeah that makes more sense oh did eric buy donuts <laughs> this makes more sense. So so do you have to upload your own variety, variety like different pizza places? No. That I'm, just, I'm just uploading something that, that I that named test.php. 25. Oh, I'm getting do you know how much all the other pizzas cost me? Between Are you filling in the other blanks? Yeah. Wow. That's it. Yeah. And hey, <laughs> that applies to everything, doesn't it? The other pizza's better. The other pizza's definitely better. But we can get it's 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 between quality and quantity. Do we want more pizza or do we want better pizza? Well, the thing is that pizza's bigger too. What did you budget for? Uh, I budgeted for. We'll see. The thing is, is Doctor On gave us less than what I budgeted for, but that's okay. I think we're good at anywhere between fifty and six or like sixty-five is cap per per meeting. Uh, and I don't particularly want to hit that cap every meeting, uh, but it's we we're, we're getting more and more people, so I don't I don't know how like that was if the pizza value goes down you might lose people. <laughs> it's true. What if I start a rival pizza shop? Okay, to devalue the cost of their pizza, because the Sounds demand will never less. recoup. <laughs> yes. It could be a pizza stand, like a hot dog stand, but for pizza. Just build your brick oven right out there. <laughs> Have you ever built a, uh, uh, what's it called? No. Yeah. Never built? <laughs> I've never built anything. Uh, what was it? I built a forge one time out of uh, concrete and a metal bucket. Oh, you actually did that? Yeah. And what happened was the first time I did it with a friend, and what happened is the first time we fired it up, it exploded because there was air trapped in the concrete, okay, and that heated up and expanded so much that it caused the concrete to burst. Are you sure it was and your friend wet died? Or... Did your friend die? Yes. <laughs> but it was awesome, so it was okay. Oh, yeah. I'm sure he would have swapped positions with you. <laughs> no, no. Okay, Eric, why don't you walk us through what you found? Oh, you know okay. Um, do you want me to walk you through doing it? Or yeah. All right, so first thing I did was create a PHP program that had something in it that had to execute so that I'd know. And I found it was really easy just to go to the web and ask the web for my first PHP program. But that's good enough. And then inside there I did an echo. Yeah. Perfect. You didn't do hello world? <laughs> and then uh, end it with the question mark close tag. And save it somewhere. Now, I don't know which, I'm going to assume it's file name, <coughs> but I named all of them aaa.php. Okay, so you save the file and then upload it, but, but it's not doing anything. So, um, Daniel, right? Yeah. Well, Daniel figured out that we, you know, using the um, traversal that we were using earlier, starting at slash upload, we're doing it that way. Yeah, it's easier to right click and copy the location. And then well, except they're all different, but there you go. And then just click on aaa.php. Now how can I verify that this is actually executing JavaScript code versus not? Well, it's not executing any JavaScript code. <laughs> 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 um, the, uh, if you right click and look at it, there shouldn't be any of that echo stuff. Yes. If there was, we'd be really excited because maybe we'd be able to. So 
we can use this program now. We could upload a program and we can view every other PHP program that's on the server. We have access to anything we want now. Actually, I mean, we don't need to look for any other vulnerabilities. We won. Mm -hmm. Wow. No, we still do because we're learning. I mean, can you, <laughs> <laughs> can't you get like a reverse but shell you from there? Executed yeah. the server. There are PHP shells that you can upload that will give you like a command prompt on there. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Those are fun. It's kind of cool. Which is way better than my first program. Cool. So what else? Uh, I'll look first, but I think I saw another one. Oh, what was the... Uh, there was one that broke every single time. Do you remember? That, that was the pass check. If you put a semicolon, it just breaks the server. Yeah. It seemed... Because the pass check... Uh, Where's the pass check? That Register. So log out, and then go to register. And then check password string. Yeah. And it does a grep. Yeah, you can see right there. Cool. So. So if you put a semi, it, the theory is, is if you put a semicolon, it should end the grep command, and then you can start and pass in a new command, uh, whatever you want. But the problem that we were having is that it froze every single time. First thing I would check is the about cross site scripting. Mm. So we can see that it's properly escaping it, so that's good. Uh, next I would try, uh, so yeah, so it's pretty clear on this one that it's using a grep. Oh. Oops. So what do I, so it's probably calling which to do this, what is it calling out to? System or exec, right, something. Oh. <coughs> so, how can we prove one way or the other? Type a semicolon. How can we prove that it's vulnerable? Bingo. Type a semicolon, and so what? What are we expecting here? It just breaks. Well. Well, it should. If there's just a semicolon, it should still go through, but it just. But now you. It's know. super breaks. That's the super break. <laughs> it's a restart Docker. Restart Docker. Yeah. yeah. It, it dies. <laughs> because I'll bet because it's waiting, it's waiting for a response. It's waiting. There's some, the pipe or something. It's, anyways, I don't know. Your best bet to try and exploit that would probably be to well, just go into burp and use the repeater. No, well, you can still do it, but instead of just doing the semicolon, do semicolon true. Okay, no, mm. so that's a burp thing. That's not, the Docker container is fine. I'm still able to access it. Oh, cool. Oh, that was weird. All right. so, oh, so when you turn off burp, then it, okay. Yeah, so I can still check passwords. So now I can check semicolon. The little blue line up there kind of stopped. Yeah. Don't send that form again, but then I should be able to just go here. you do to fix it? Just restart the browser? Why well, they haven't fixed it yet? Oh. Oh, that's Is 
So is the browser then freaking out? Is there some like parse thing that's happening with it that it just can't? Uh, I don't know. I've got the debug it for Yeah, let's put, put, take this to the repeater and see what we get. Repeater. Are you waiting? Eric, are you trying what you suggested? I'm gonna try. Well, no, I broke it. I did. Yeah, I did have the same issue, so I'm re I restarted. Oh, and restarting the browser, the web browser fixed it. So it's actually the web browser that's having a coronary. Well, Burp Suite too, right? And Burp Suite, yeah. I didn't have to restart Burp Suite. I just turned Intercept back on. It was fine. Try four. Okay, cool. All right, let's see how we can do this. Password strength. Bar. Okay. So the way it was testing it, apparently it didn't work. So we can send a repeater, we can make sure that we can send this, and it works. So I can say foo. So, likely it's executing this exact command, right? But if we want something to execute, how can we tell whether it worked or not? See the rest of the code, right? It won't show it, like that PHP thing. Um, yeah. So that's one question, right? So, do we actually see the output of this command? No. Exactly. We don't see the output. All it says is "foo is a bad password." What do we do? Like a really complicated. A reverse connection. It'll say, "Is a bad password." Why is it a bad password? Because it's not correct. Common words. I just put in random gibberish. Yeah, whatever. Okay, it's also it's a bad word. So, how can we check? So, if it's not ever giving us the output of this command, how can we check what it does? A reverse connection. I can't remember what it's called. Use NC to listen on one port and then make a connection back to it. We may be able to try to get it to connect back to us. What else? Could we try and pipe the output to like echo or something? Pipe what output? Oh, to a file. No, to a file. Pipe it to a file? And then we can browse the whole directory mm. so we can, we'd be able to see the file. We may be able to do that. Where are we here? We're in the root directory. So good. Uh, one, oh, you can't see it here. Uh, a problem with that could be that what if the web server does not have write permissions to that directory, we're not going to be able to write anything out. But we do you know a folder it does have right? We think we do, yes. Uh, we don't necessarily, well, let's see. We can try that. So how are we going to execute it then? So what we're passing in is what it's going to check. So we want to pass in something for it to check, right? Okay. Uh, and then pipe and then now pipe that to uh, the directory that we want to go to the uploads directory. Right. Or the... Uh, which one was it? Just upload. Pipe? 
Or it, the carrot? I don't. It was still running. It to run it, yeah, but to run it, it's docker uh -huh. run dash p something. So what exact command, based on all we know, is it going to execute here? How do you have it there? Is it going to grip? Uh, I'm just going to look. It puts it around oh. the carrot and the dollar sign. So. So it'll be grep, carrot, foo, uh, grep, carrot, foo, bracket, upload, slash, php, then dollar sign, space, slash, etc, slash, dictionary, dash, common, dash, words. What if we just wanted to execute this? You have to. What does the touch screen do? Just create some files. Yeah. So, what if we just want to execute that? How do you execute a process, let's say, in the background of another process? Or. PG. Uh, yes, but when you're trying to execute one command. Uh, oh, you do a. Uh, Control Z. That is to escape the already running process. That's the sleep of currently running process. Execute the command, then you do ampersand, ampersand, and then it'll just run in the background. One ampersand will run in the background, but it still needs to be something that we execute, right? But we're still, we well, still we're have this. Touch. We're doing touch. Right, we still have this running in the background, appending to the end of whatever we put in. Remember, our output is going to be dropped in right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Semicolon. Well, or yeah, the problem with and and is it depends on the prior one. The first you command. could do or or. Right. Yeah. So or pi. I, like semicolon. So this actually may be what's. Ah uh, ah. Uh, so I think this is what's happening when we just put in the semicolon here. Yeah. It's trying to grep and waiting for standard input. Mm -hmm. it didn't pass it a file of what to grep for, so it's going to hang forever. That makes sense. So that's why we need to put the file of where we want to try to read from. Mm. So now before we do this, what's our what's our success metric? Uh, file if the file appears. Alright. Then refresh the page. So this was the command that it executed, we think. Although what's interesting about here? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, this is a good teaching moment. All right, so let's see if this works. Okay, it did work, but what happened with our input here? What don't we see here that we thought we'd see? Another grab. We don't see another grab. Why not? That means the ands failed. Why? Substitute it out. Yeah, they didn't make it. They didn't make it. 
Saving Private Hand. Could that be sanitation on your end? Is that sanitary? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know. Where do we put our input in? We put... What do we mean by input? Where do we put... How did the, this input get into the program? Into that PHP code? We put it in there. Where? Through password. Field. Mm. Of what? When we put it, unencode it. What is this? Header. Oh. There's the whole thing. There's HTML. There's HTML. Wait. <laughs> it's, yes, yeah, it's slash HTML. That's the post. Yes. It's the post. This is our request. <laughs> I know. This is no HTML. I just know that it's encoded. Like I don't know. Asking me. No. <laughs> you are unencoded. So it's URL encoded. What's URL encoding for parameters? What are the special characters there? Ampersands. Which delineate what? Space. Ampersands replace. What ampersands do? Just look it up. Is it not? What is a URL made up of? The parameters of a URL. Oh, they're, uh, oh, so we would do percent 26 like instead of query or whatever. But why? That's what he's getting at. So we did ampersand grep. Because this is, right. is it being sunk as base grep? Posting this URL no. to the server, so it goes into the... Here we're in URL. No. This is no. URL no. query parameters, right? Header. Key value pairs separated yeah. by amp. Uh, key equals, key equals the value, and then an ampersand, the next key equals the next value. So we put these... Uh, Ampersand's in here. The web server thinks we're starting a new URL parameter. And we can actually see it was very lenient and allowed us to do spaces and other things that we probably shouldn't have. Well, how did it execute uh, the grep? Obviously, it did it up to here. So it did oh, okay, up okay. to here, and that was enough for this to work. But if we select this, right click on it, and we can say convert selection, URL, mm. URL encode key characters. Oh. Now when we send this, we come down here, and we can see the command grep dev null touch upload foo ampersand ampersand grep. So now we actually got the ampersand character into there. Very cool. So we don't even need to run the other grep. Uh, no, apparently not. But we like probably should have, just in case. Yeah, it's like I think actually what may have happened is we may have touched a, something called dollar sign maybe, and then tried to touch this etc dictionary's common words file. Mm -hmm. Those are all passed with argument. Uh, so do we have to do this in the repeater, or can we type that into the password check line? Okay, but this is way easier. Got it. Can you? So you could. Cat Etsy password. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Do that and then just pipe that into foo instead of uh, mm -hmm. the grep. So do what? So uh, do cat uh, slash etc slash password or PAS is, yeah. And then uh, the carry. Give it the semicolon. Yeah. So. The way well, well, yeah, and the and the greater than you sign, you'll have to encode it too. Hmm? Uh, oh yeah, no, you won't. You won't. You'll be all right. Let's see what happens. So did foo grow in size? Easy password. Hey. Hey. So now we can see all the users on the system. So we could execute any command on the system too, right? And get the output. Uh -huh. <laughs> How can we know 
what user we're executing as on the system. You name? Who am, who am, I? Who am I? Who am I? Duh. Why did I think you name? Let's t know the name but, of the system. Yeah. <laughs> I would do ID. That's hmm. another good one that will tell you the exact. Also, if we're really good, we'd probably change this to a pen. That way we're not getting rid of uh. this every time. But. <laughs> so we can see we're executing as the www-data user on this system. Oh. Well, at least it's not rude. Well, yes, that's a good thing. <laughs> Uh, but this gives us our first toehold in the system, right? The same way as when we uploaded that PHP script. Now we're fundamentally executing code as the www-data user, which means now that we're on there, we can put in backdoors, we can get on the system, then we can try to use that to uh, exploit up to root. Now you could make a pipe for net for net count. Okay, that's let's how, take a that's how Okay, the that's other how way. The, actually, the easiest way to do this, so there's two things I want to go over. So, backticks, what do backticks do in a command, on the command line? That's what I thought you were getting at earlier. Set process. I was getting there, but we could do something else. That actually worked. So what does backticks do? Set process. Execute this process and use the results as basically the command here right at this point. Um, I don't know if this will work right away. Let's see. Let's see. Type back no. text. Type the word in back text. Yep. Yeah. That's what so here we have the LS output. So that's the other good, good and easy way to test this. But now we have to think of what if we can't, what if the www data user can't write anywhere? What if there's not an upload directory? How can we get the output? Yeah. Could you? It's on Chrome directory. Okay. Doesn't have one. And how would we get that data? We can't read it from directory. We're outside. Could it SSH to your own server? Yeah. And then? That might be too far fetched. That'd be one way. It's a little complicated because we don't yet know if. This thing allows outgoing connections. So a key, really easy one, is time. So what if I do ping dash c? I don't know. Let's say google.com. Uh, oh, dash c. I need a number. So I ping google.com ten times. So if I send this, and we can see that we're waiting. Uh, and it's either timing out or... And if I got rid of these, I'd see that the response is immediate. right? And I can even be even more sure that this is actually what's happening by, let's say, putting oh, wait, this number oh, in wait, half. You messed, you messed up the... the Thanks. Putting this number in half in one... Or we could run sleep. Yeah, or you could run sleep or anything like that. So a timing-based attack is actually a really great way to be able to tell if you have command execution on the system. Because then you don't care what the security permissions are, right? You don't care if you can make outgoing connections or incoming connections. And once you get here, then you can worry about how do I actually use this to exploit things. But fundamentally, once you can get it to execute commands of your choosing, you completely own the system. So this is command injection vulnerability. So we didn't actually talk about this, but this is a really good one to look for. Um, so have we completely on the system? You couldn't you multiple ways, but have we have you found have you owned the system completely and found all the vulnerabilities? Well, I mean, like just just because we could execute command doesn't mean that we have complete ownership. We're not rude yet. <laughs> Cool. Correct. Correct. That would be other steps, but there's like a config.php file, yeah. That might have database information of the username and password in there. But this is it. I mean, once we're here, we can do all that stuff. But mm -hmm. what's another vulnerability? Inside the command injection? No, in the program. Oh, in the okay. Just in the application. Yes. I mean, 
I don't know if this counts as uh, vulnerability, but you can input Prove to me that it counts. the same it coupon over and over and over again. So walk me through that. Uh, Where do you find the coupon? In the calendar, on I think it only works on like Fridays and Saturdays. Yeah. Uh, it gives you a coupon code for 10% off. And then if you... Uh, fill your card up with a bunch of pictures. You can continually use the same coupon code. Wait, how'd you get Bryce's password? Because I created this site. It's also Bryce. Because <laughs> Bryce is not a very bright user. <laughs> <laughs> Did you know somebody named Bryce? No. <laughs> so, now I can enter my coupon code. So this is actually getting applied. Eventually, you're going to be paying us. <laughs> That's how coupons work. Why am I calling about text? Actually, I have no idea if this calculation is correct. It's like, if, I mean, it'll eventually go to like one cent, right? Yeah, I mean, it should not go... It'll round down eventually to zero, maybe. It seems, though, like it's concatenating, or it's it's calculating the percentage based on the last percentage off. Whereas it's not applying, it's not doing a summation of all the percentages. It's applying 10% of that, then getting the new price and applying 10% to that, and continually doing that. So, is this a vulnerability or not? Well, I'm assuming you check out and it tries to subtract Absolutely. the numbers. If the user, if the programmers didn't intend it. <laughs> but so I just purchased these pictures that should have caught. frame option headers. What does that mean? So, so you you're could just reading scan results again? Is that illegal? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when you have to ask him. <laughs> is it and what is it? Yeah, what is it? <laughs> what do you mean, what is it? <laughs> I could tell you. You just it. ask him. Why is it vulnerable? So you could embed iframes uh, or any other links into a page. So when you click on uh, anything, um, you're clicking on something else that you don't know where it is. And what, uh, basically what that is is click check. What do X frame header options will prevent? Uh, prevent you from being able to modify that in HTML. Do you send out the uh, go to the backwards. Like, sure. Frame header options means that you can't, uh, the page itself so cannot be go back to because that's how you, you probably want to uncheck that 999. So I wanted to get you uh, to no, find that right. picture. I sent yeah, you a page. But that's have a the little, uh, port that the, a, what's it called, so the service is running on. Uh, but uh, 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 not where the traffic is coming through. And then I can see if I can somewhere else. Yeah. I don't think it is. I don't think it is. Confirm button. Oh, wait, a little bit. 
Oh no, this is the previous page. It's interacting with the Wacko Pico site without knowing. This is not. It, just check uh, now if you go to intercept. Uh, the X-frame header option says so tells the browser to don't ever frame me. Or you can specify 10 frames. So yeah, they don't have that. Yeah, it's old. Let's try going to uh, like recent or uploads. Because I can't tell if this is not loading or it's Anything else? That's it? No, okay. Found all the bugs. Uh, oh, did I mess up the server? Especially the metagame. Click, click on yeah. options. Uh, you know it was a site that was created by a lazy graduate student. So why would they include functionality in this thing? Intercept. For funsies. And it's on. Okay, go back. Go go to uh, your preferences again. Go to advanced settings. Now unclick this use proxy for all protocol and. Uh, uh, Delete. Uh, I guess there's a vulnerability with uh, cookies because I totally just restarted the Docker image and was able to log right back yeah. in, uh, like without logging in. I don't think the server should. Uh, Who's the one who was talking about calendars? That's me. What were you saying? Uh, if you go to the. You're using the. Uh, I have no idea. You're using the. No, let's, let's see if we. Can. If you go to the uh, slash calendars, you need to find something else that's not. Or slash calendar. So, okay. That's not using this, but you can use it for information gathering. Uh, Got it. Actually, yeah, oh, this is just WW data. data. I don't know how to like, <laughs> get to it, but it's there. What's on here? What could be called to add oh, them to the build group? Yeah. I haven't found any uh, vulnerabilities yet, but it almost certainly is one. Now, uh, you see uh, the date? Well, uh, uh, if you go into how do you get him out? Yeah, I'm an admin to work with this. Yeah, I, I was trying to help him, but it, it looks like he has everything correct, but it's not. Uh, For some reason, it doesn't get to set. Um, so what are the options on the process? Okay, so you're listening on port 8080, so then you have to go over to Wacko Pico. Oh, 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 I see. You have to up, update your settings, your network settings. Yeah. This is the problem. So you, you're telling it you have no proc. Don't use a proxy for oh, localhost. Yeah. That's the default setting, so don't worry about that. That makes sense. sense. So now if you go back to the browser and refresh, this should go through the proxy thing. So now oh. it's oh. intercepting. Sweet. Well, first you're going to have to click on that. <laughs> it doesn't let you click on that. Go to the settings right there. Get restored defaults. Try clicking on it. Exit it and try opening it. Oh, wait, what's that in alerts? Failed to start properly. You might have multiple verbs running. Oh, it's that. It depends on the permissions of that file. I don't know. Have I seen my H like yeah. HMOD 777 in the entire Which password file? You could. Yeah. You have access to password. Yeah. So uh, C root. Yeah. Yeah, you should not be able to delete it. Yeah. <laughs> Darn. What would happen if you deleted ETC password? Uh, would all your users go bye bye? Yes. Mod, oh, says, I found one. Plus 777. <laughs> Star? Sounds about right. What? I don't think that. Yep. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. The new one. Yeah, You got a new one? Mm -hmm. Nice. Shit, restore the default for that as well. For this one. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait, wait. So it was on the purpose. Yeah. So should be fine. Alright, what else? No, but it's not running. Why? Go to your options. See how it says not running? There you go. Does that work? Can I turn the intercept on? Can I see now go to your browser. browser. Uh, we'll make sure that your browser is running through the proxy. Uh, Chrome slide. Okay. What's this? How long 
it takes to see it on the entire server. I mean, not that long. I feel like there has to be a bonus. <laughs> it was I was running around a lot today, so I traded for a pizza. It was I was Probably down on my luck show. and. Yeah, oh, dash capital. Yeah. Yeah. It's at my place. Hey, what was the coupon? What? what? Uh, it's in calendars. Well, just what is it? Do you remember? Oh, where is... It was where Super or something. No. It's like Super U or something? Yeah, it's just calendars.php. Yeah, it used the... to work like... I used to put the, like, my IP address or something. Uh -huh. I messed the server up. Why is this not? Well, you have to change your settings down here in Firefox because like you just opened up a new browser. Oh, Go back to Burp and go to Oxford. Yeah. Yeah. I have no idea. Super U21 is the coupon. I feel like there has to be a vulnerability though in the uh, flash or whatever when it asks you what your favorite color is. Into the contest? Yeah. But I don't have Flash installed to do this because I'm not going to install Flash. <laughs> I'm sure there's a vulnerability there somewhere. I think it's just a sure. yeah. We can overwrite the file since we can write files and then the Flash can do whatever we want. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah, but I don't think that's what the vulnerability is. Okay, try that other well, no, so you would use the picture thing to upload a Flash file and then you would use the grep to copy it to that location. Yes. And then we could display our own. Yeah, but the, the that's not that's just the vulnerability with the command injection, per se. There should be a vulnerability in the flash itself, I would assume. Yeah. Otherwise, it wouldn't be the only thing on the website made with flash, and it wouldn't yeah. be so. <laughs> so what happens when Type in that negative in the Oh. Never mind. There we go. Yeah, for whatever this reason, this must have killed yeah. the doctor somehow. <laughs> so now we've tried the browser. He did it. That's what I'll say. There you go. Mm -hmm. It's the direct. How do we exploit Flash without installing Flash? I don't want to install Flash. So I turn off my my ears out. What browser is this? Mm. Really? Then, uh, if it's Firefox, why not try going to, uh, What's your favorite color? Oh, I see. Mine's Aquamarine. So I think Chrome prevented it from doing it. Let's try that. Yep, that works. Another, another, another cross, another reflection. Oh, in the color thing? Well, I mean, you could just put it probably in the color thing, but if you just modify the URL and type it in, it just does it. Mm, I see what you're saying. Okay. So I have no idea. Not the smallest, but... So I... I'm doing the next... Wait... I didn't think XSS? Do Hi... Oh wait, I didn't do it. Why did it do it? Ooh, I got a super sneaky one. Ooh! Because you are so sneaky. I don't know what you can do with it, but... Actually, it doesn't work if you do it here, though. 
Eric's a part-time burglar. Someone... What? Oh, because it Eric's encodes a part-time it. burglar. <laughs> this is really exact, because it encodes the, uh... Of course, okay. he's alone. This is actually really exact, because it encodes the ticks when you do it. He gets himself out of trouble. Really. <laughs> Why is this not working now? It just... Oh, I'm in Chrome. That's why it's not working. Yeah. I can't do it. Yeah, duh. Yeah, no, it works. Chrome is smart. Chrome won't let me do it. So, so so Oh, yeah, it happens. Wait, I have to download Flash. What did you have to write it down before? What's that mean? Huh? Or why? Why was it? Why did Adam say it was illegal? Because he wants us to do it easier. Yes. Learning. Ah. It's like using Chegg. Hmm? Chegg? Oh, what? I see. Well, we are exploiting Wait, you too? What are you doing? Wait, I didn't want that. What? It sounds like so much fun. How's <laughs> studying been? Good study. Adam, did you go over the admin vulnerabilities? Well, just that you can get into the admin area with admin admin. Nope, I did not. <laughs> but why don't you practice that? Okay. Did you find that out by <laughs> testing that piece of paper that's in front of you? Yes, I found it out last week, like most of these things. Do but, uh, in the world? Well, but so where did you find the admin link? Well, it's at the bottom of, I think, every page. It's in there. It's just admin. So, for all you guys who don't know, uh, a lot of people are really lazy, and so a great thing to try in all admin password areas or admin, 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 or admin password or yeah. things like that, yeah. The price not that, yeah. Yeah, me too. And so, now we can... Now you win. Now we win. Oh, but it's broken. Oh, it's broken. It's almost like there wasn't enough time to finish this admin. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a vulnerability in the brokenness. But... So, Great, then you use definitely it. one vulnerability, right? Default usernames and passwords. This is what you should try every single time, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. All right. What else? You can do cross-site and me flash thingy on the... Uh... Yeah, how come you guys didn't say that first of all? <laughs> I just found it. Well, I finally loaded the web page in Chrome so I could do it. <laughs> so now installing Flash and Firefox. Where is it? Home? Uh, you get to. Where is that? Uh, it's oh. the first page when you log oh, in. I don't. Yeah, it's yeah. slash home.php. Oh, yeah. Why don't you tell me the URL that this goes to? Um, slash submit name.php question mark value equals. Just reflected though, right? Yes. Yeah. What's the worst you can do with reflected? We will explore that. We can figure out a good way for us to test that. Okay. Because I just couldn't think of anything off the top of my head that because it only because only you can yeah, send. Ah, right so we talked about this before you came. So, mm. but I can send. I, I can trick you to click on this link if I get you to click on this link. Oh, now this I see. That I put in here that I wrote executes in your browser same origin policy. That yeah. makes sense. Yes. Okay, I can see that. So it's not it's hard to have as big as impact as a store, but you still it's just I mean, essentially just as bad because I can get you to trick on click on anything, right? The other thing is that's why that exists. I can URL encode mm -hmm. the heck out of this whole string that I'm passing in so you would not know that it looks like slash script or anything like that. It looks like any old link. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I have an, I have another one if yep. you want. So in the admin area great beautiful admin area. Yes, <laughs> now log in, please, using your fancy password. Create new user. Now, it 
it's interesting. <clears throat> the URL at the top says page create. And the PHP name is create.php. So what if you made it FFF? Page equals FFFFF. Oh. So what's happening is it's, it's including any PHP page that's on the system. And you can do... That's through the page equals? Yeah. So it's pretty much anything you want. Similar to query, but for PHP pages. So it's, it's basically just doing a strict, it's just looking at the get parameter, which is and page, and then just putting it into this require once, which is a PHP, wow. for including, you use it in PHP to include, so you don't like, you can include a page dynamically or whatever. Um, you could do. So how can I actually use this? So you upload your own page. Like we've, we've done that. You have to upload to that half of the problem. But now, but now the page no longer has to have a dot .php. Oh yeah, it would still have to have a dot .php. But okay. so let's let's look. This is good. So I have this upload this one, right? Yes. Yeah. Cool. So you're saying if I do what? That minus the PHP, it should. You have to navigate up a couple directories though. For this one. Yeah, we'll have to figure out. Actually, delete the last PHP because it's just doubling. But now we have to go up and then. Is it up two or up? It's up. Yeah, up one. One. So, up. how. So, okay, so now we're going to. I'm going to have to actually just tell you there's no way we're going to get this on our own. But let's say I couldn't upload something with the name.php. Right. Right. So, which means that I need to control exactly which file we're opening, but what is the program doing to whatever I give as input to this page parameter? Appending.php? Appending.php. So we can use a horrible, horrible fact. And where does that work? Uh, let's go over. Well, you already had PHP. It worked. You didn't get .php, PHP. That's fatal error. Oh. They included null in the URL encoding. So what are you trying to do with null? Anyways. Terminate the string right there. Yeah. Uh, this change mm -hmm. over to PHP. So the idea is the percent zero zero is the null character, and so mm -hmm. when your string is concatenated together in PHP, your string is like. dot dot slash dot dot slash edc slash password the null byte and then dot php but when it gets passed to require it require uses c functions in order to do what it's doing so it only goes up until that zero character um, I wouldn't have gotten that one yeah it's a classic uh, ctf style thing so wait why does it matter if it only goes up to that zero character because we're trying to get it to do something than, other than dot PHP. Right, because it's appending that dot PHP. Something weird is going on here. But what are you trying to do with etc password? I'm trying to get the etc password file. To display it? Yeah. Oh, OK. So require once takes whatever you give it and outputs it as if it was, well, interprets it as if it was PHP code. Like standard so if you just take a regular text file, if it doesn't have any start PHP tags and end PHP tags, it will just output whatever is there. Okay. Just do a slash at scene instead of trying to go up, right? Or not. Yeah, something's going wrong. This maybe doesn't work <laughs> the way I thought it used to. And they, maybe they fixed it. Yeah. Well, no, no, no. Maybe mod PHP fixed it and doesn't pass that through anymore. Or maybe the require. I mean, do you have the original? Are you using the same version? No, of, I don't think so. Yeah, of mod PHP. I didn't have enough time to see if we were actually using the same exact same 
and set up. Um, anyway, the site is interesting. thing here let me so one cool thing to do whenever you can upload a, a PHP file to a page um, how do we do that upload yeah too much, too much source On your computer. We got your IP address. We've been connecting to port 8888 on your computer. Good thing it's in a docker. <laughs> Where are you trying to go? Just go to the sites. The sites. <laughs> the regular website. Isn't home.php a. Uh, yes. Wait, go back one. Uh, you we broke it. something. We broke something with that require. Probably. Is my guess. It shouldn't be permanent, though. Not if you restart the server. Not your pictures folder. Uh, another way to look at this to to realize that uh, this is another way to test for this. So here we can see we're on the index. Up. So Eric figured it out from going to the create page, which you only could go to if you knew the username and password. Right. If you're just on the outside, you can see this index.php page, and yet there's this page equals login. So one way to say is, hmm, is there a login.php page? I don't know if my computer's melting or what's going on. <laughs> but does that work? I think that works. Yeah, so get admin login.php gave me the same admin area page. So that's kind of a hint that, I mean, it's a very big hint that, oh man, there's a login.php page that is exactly the same thing as accessing the index.php page with the page equals login. Oh. That makes sense? Yeah. yeah. That's what you're or just by changing this parameter, see, it would tell you, I mean, that would be. Page. That it's clearly trying to do this. Oh, so you could do a page equals from any page? Mm -hmm. Yes, there is also our entire page. So this index.php page is on file that's just doing rec require it's another PHP like a C file. header file. That only right? So you can put a yeah. 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 That's not how it's written. I want to know what I'm out. So you just right. kind of have to figure it out based on clues from the URL and clues from the functionality. Yeah. Looks like you can also just go straight to home.php. It's not actually doing any authentication. Hey, I learned some stuff. Well, here, I've already logged well, in, but yeah, I'll tell you what it is. we could double check that how. Give me a so we take the home page, and how can we change this to test that? That I can just access it directly. Remove the session. Change the session. Yeah, just remove the cookies. Oh, no. <laughs> so it actually doesn't. Oh, it didn't actually work? 303 C other. So uh, the problem is you've already logged in. Okay, it's just asking you to log in even though you're already logged in. Home doesn't, maybe create does though. Gonna upload something. Oh yeah, yeah, I was gonna show you something cool. Okay. Um, no, we're gonna show it. <laughs> what? Well, give us some time to work more. No, 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 it's not a vulnerability. It's, it's uh, PHP. He's showing it's you what PHP. PHP info shows you, which yeah. is a lot. 
So PHP info, yeah, if you can get this it's to run, coming. you can get a lot of cool things to run. Let's see. Here's my test.php. I think it's correct syntax, just a uh, PHP info. Uploading it. Overcharging for it. <laughs> Your computers. I don't know. Uh, seeing the PHP info might be invaluable. Phantom yeah. underscores. It's your next challenge. Oh. <laughs> what was that? No, he just navigated to a page that I thought was on this, but I couldn't tell if it was on this. Two actually really important values here that we're going to play with. One is allow URL include. So if this wondering. is enabled, which I should probably change this setting so it does enable it, this means that we can put in here an HTTP URL and it will go and request that page and execute it as if it was PHP code. So Which you is see that it's saying that it can't do it because of the allow URL include. But if that value is changed to yes, which some people sometimes did, you could then fetch any page, oh, no. download that, and execute it as PHP. So how is it? But it's by that? default off. Well, normally. Uh, it de it you depends could on the history of the PHP person. installation. I think in older versions so it was enabled by default. If you huh. had, if you were like so running a fishing also, camp, um, and sent them a Bank of America URL, but the not to add, yes, you have your the whole thing point that looks there. Like I think America, be clear. And they log into your page to everybody. And now is you that have there. if you do that, it's you can awesome. run on the server yes. whatever code you want. So, so you, you don't have to load a PHP script somewhere else to a mm -hmm. server you yeah. control. It's just a text file mm -hmm. that says delete everything. There, and now you're executing your shell or doing whatever you want there. Yeah, um, and it also works with uh, rm dash uh, r open is forward. also is actually enabled by default so whenever they open a file if they're opening a file that you control of what they're going to open you can do all kinds of cool tricks you can like fetch things you can make ftp requests you can like this one has uh, so, yeah, supported protocols and wrappers. I'd use this for one CTF that was like insane. Um, you can access files from the local file system. You can access HTTP URLs, FTP. You can access various like PHP streams, uh, which is like, I can't remember if this was, yeah, standard input, standard output. Zlib, you can compress things. Some of them have SSH2, SSH access. You can do all kinds of cool stuff with this. Wait, what is running F open? Uh, the PHP code. The PHP code calls F open with user input, then you can control what it opens. Who's PHP code? This? Anyone? Yes. Yeah. The server you're attacking. Server. Yeah. But that's if it has a URL in it. If it has so URL in it. URL include. Yeah. No, no, no. If it has this allow oh, URL F open, oh, this one's yeah, yeah. on for that's a lot that's of that's servers. That's so this would be like, open up this file, read it, and send it to you. But with that, you could also open up HTTP. And you can also open up HTTP. So then what you could do is, because it's, ex it's a web request from their server, so you could use that to try to port scan what ports are open on their local machine. Maybe there's a uh, 
they're running some management interface that's only available from local hosts. So if you're connecting to it locally, you can access it. That happens a lot. You can even try to access other servers on its internal network from there to try to see what other computers are on there. So wait, what's the difference between allow URL f open and include? F open is the f open family of fun functions of opening a file. Include are include require uh, those kind of which are like take this PHP code and execute it. So, um, what like what is the difference of what you can do with each of those? So, like with both of them, you can open up like FTP or HTTP. F open by default just reads it, so it reads it and does whatever the program does with it. Like re opening a file, you just open a file and you output. It. Conclude. Include opens it and says execute this right here as if it was PHP code. So, so which one's like it. more of a security issue? Include. Okay. Because you can just execute arbitrary code? Yes. From any website? Yeah. Well, right. so this thing is any website. If it's not open, then anywhere on their server. How common are, are So you can, things? yeah, you can also use um, it to. CTFs are pretty common. <laughs> well, real life. Uh, real life. Still probably CTF pretty common. Oh, yeah. Wait, CTFs aren't real life? I don't know. Well, I mean, Maybe that's not real stuff. Did, Maybe it's like did you get a letter from the NSA? <laughs> <laughs> I did. I did. Oh, the, oh, the challenge, the, yeah, 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 I got that. Cool, okay, so what we'll do from here, now that we've kind of explored a lot of Wacko Pico, let's see, is there anything else remaining? There's still one very tricky, there's still a C1 injection vulnerability that nobody's found, it's a little bit tricky, but it's definitely there. Uh, there's also... Yeah, and we'll um, add you to our hackers list. Is, does that, the one that's tricky, does it need to be chained with another? So it might not do more of that. Okay. Yeah, I wish no. Okay, the time to I see how you want to play this. Maybe next year. Um, really cool. So then what we'll do is, I think we'll dig more into SQL injection, so we'll look at fancier types of SQL injection vulnerabilities and how we can bypass things and track things and do all kinds of cool stuff.